Hello and welcome to Lutherans Alive. My name is Gregory Held, and this is the program that brings you the story of Lutheran Christians and their ministries in southwestern Pennsylvania. With us today is a sort of a special guest, uh, Dr. Kurt Thompson, professor of religion at Teal College. Kurt, welcome. It's great, great to be here. It's, it's great to have you here. Um, we were talking before the program, and uh, you mentioned that you had an opportunity recently uh, to lead a pericope study on the season of Lent and Easter. Is that right? That's right. I was asked to do that by the Synod, and it was a little bit of a stretch for me. I teach scriptures, but I'm more theology, so I took it as an opportunity to focus a little less on text and more on context. Well, that also brought you onto our radar screen to have you come on Lutherans Alive and to share a little bit about the life of a professor at Teal College and uh, to talk a bit about religion and uh, your faith walk, as it were. Uh, perhaps you could um, help our viewers get a little bit of a sense of the life of a college professor these days. Um, what's it like to be a member of the Department of Religion and to be teaching at Teal? Well, I teach 12 uh, hours of class a, semester, a week, and so I really don't have to do very much over there. I, I sleep in late and, and uh, make my way over for my couple hours a day. Actually, I get over there usually around 7 and leave sometimes at 6. There seems to be plenty to do beyond just the hours in the classroom because we have a, a thrive, thriving community with many new initiatives that are underway. We have a new president at Teal College. That's right. President Troy Van Aken, full of energy kind of guy who has a lot of new initiatives that are underway, and I have been involved in some of that. But for my teaching, uh, it's usually three or four courses depending on. Most of my teachings in the religion department but we also have a couple of long-standing courses that are uh, sort of the centerpiece courses for our liberal arts curriculum. Mm. Uh, the one we started maybe 25 years ago, which is a course in uh, the history of Western humanities running from Egypt to the Beatles. So I teach in that on occasion. And then our second year, we have Science and Our Global Heritage, which is a two-semester course. Now students just need to take one semester of that, but in the first semester we deal with um, Brazil and biodiversity and uh, India and food population. Mm. Second semester, Nigeria and natural resources and China and industrialization. And the thread running through that course is sustainability. So the goal is for students to learn something about science and other cultures, uh, but also to uh, gain some broad, general, global knowledge for becoming better citizens in our world today. But in the department, we have our, our course that all students take, which is a course in interpreting the Jewish and Christian scriptures. Oh. And uh, so I end up teaching that along with the other professors uh, quite a bit. It's a great course because there a lot of students have had some background in the, in the Sunday school presentations and they know some of the stories, but to allow them to dig more deeply into a consideration of the text, again, in relation to context, uh, and to know that it's not about this old, ancient book. It's about the meaning of that book in our present experience. And as people are introduced to that, that becomes very meaningful for them and thus, as you say, this, this learning process that's taking place there and that we need to be involved in to, to keep ahead of the game. I'm sure one of the challenges of uh, coursework is to be relevant, educational, and interesting, um, among other things. Mm -hmm. uh, how much input does the actual professor have in terms of deciding the content of a course? We have uh, an oversight committee so that any course has to pass muster with that. But then, once you get a course on the book, such as interpreting the Jewish and Christian scriptures, and we have a number of people teaching that, it's going to be shaped in a way that the person thinks uh, it should be shaped, like all serious academic institutions. Uh, to have the academic freedom is very important. And we've always, at Teal, in my 27 years there, we've always had a strong dose of academic freedom and uh, 
the trust of the administration and the board that we will deliver courses that are um, meaningful and that are not irresponsible. Some people just use the scriptures and they provide lectures to get the critical. Others, you got the scriptures, the secondary text, some will use scriptures, some sort of novel. So there is, there is uh, creativity in how one delivers a given course. You say you've been at Teal now 27 years. Is that on the faculty that entire time? It is. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm starting to feel comfortable there. <laughs> long enough to put down roots and the, it is. to become a part of the landscape, as we say. Yeah, and, and as one looks to the future, one might think of going back to the homeland, uh, but as we think about that, we'll likely be in the Greenville area. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful community. As, as you have become a part of the, the educational uh, sphere in the teaching world, did you know early on that you wanted to um, have a vocation in education and um, higher education at that? Well, I, I grew up in a Scandinavian ghetto. Uh, Fergus Falls, Minnesota, 12,608 people. Uh, but I was in Bethlehem Lutheran Church, which back then was the old American Lutheran Church. On the same block uh, was First English Lutheran Church. Uh -huh. Those two congregations were both 2,500 members. And on the other corner was Zion's Lutheran of only 1,000. We had six Lutheran churches in this town and uh, 33 churches in this community. Most people in the town, uh, their name ended in Sun. And so we thought the Swedes were the other of the universe, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. being a Norwegian community here. So uh, that, my life in that congregation, Bethlehem Lutheran, uh, was very formative. Our social life was there besides our, our worshiping. Uh, we had 33 in our confirmation class. Uh, we sang in the choir. And so that that uh, and the religious life in our home, the devotional life there, devotions every evening. So my religious uh, faith, I can't, I can't pinpoint when that began. It was, it was always there. But then as I was going through school, the intellectual questions came on, and I enjoyed the sciences greatly, and I thought uh, of the ministry early on, but then I also was intrigued by life's eternal questions that I was getting drawn into. And so I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll go into the sciences. So then I, I went to uh, Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota, which was a, a church college. And there you took religion courses and a little philosophy. And in those courses, I really started to get the wonderful experience of bringing this world of faith and this world of intellectual inquiry together. And it was starting to become a unified worldview. And that was really an exciting experience in my life. And that's what uh, pushed me into thinking seriously about going into the world of education, where I could attempt to foster that kind of experience for others. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I ended up, I, I had to kind of continue on with the science, get the chemistry major, a math minor, although I was taking a lot of the religion and philosophy and, and Greek, etc. But uh, so I ended up with that major, but then went on to the, the seminary and uh, thinking, well, I don't really want to go into a parish. I want to learn more about God. And the dean said, well, you can come and do that, but this place is sort of geared toward uh, training <laughs> clergy. Don't be surprised if you end up going into that. <laughs> I'm going to have to interrupt you for just a second. It is time for a break, but I'd like to say, take a little time to talk about that seminary experience. That seems to be an interesting time for pastors.